the electronic patient reported outcome tool that we used uh, gathered information on symptoms as well as adherence for patients on oral chemotherapy. We thought it was important to use this because we know that between clinic visits that patients continue to have symptoms from, from their cancer and their cancer care um, and limiting, assessing those symptoms and acting on them to our clinical visits in the office um, is likely not sufficient to provide the highest quality of care. Um, there's been data, including at the ASCO plenary session several years ago, that collecting patient-reported outcomes and patient-reported symptoms can actually not only improve symptoms, reduce um, unnecessary healthcare utilization, but also prolong survival. So what we did here was um, at attempted to collect that data between clinic visits, which is unique to our our project, integrate it into the electronic health record and make that information available to the clinical team caring for the patients. So we uh, started this project in patients who were English speakers. So it was important to us within our clinic environment in our gastrointestinal oncology group um, to make sure we had the process correct and working um, before rolling it out to other patient populations. Um, so we implemented it in eight patients, 10 to date, in our GI oncology group. Um, it was developed locally within our system, integrated into our electronic health record, and available for patients to fill out as many times as they wanted, whenever they wanted, um, between clinic visits. Um, we had integrated um, disclaimers and guidance to patients on um, making sure they reached out to their clinical team as well, especially if it was nights, weekends, and holidays when someone might not be checking the data or receiving any triggers based on the responses that they filled out. So um, there were built-in triggers that alerted the project team and therefore the clinical team when patients had new or worsening symptoms, any adherence concerns for their oral chemotherapy, or they simply had another concern that they felt it was necessary to talk to their clinical team about. Um, what I think is most exciting is that now that we have our process um, stabilized and understood so that we know how to manage and respond to these, these concerns and symptoms that patients have, we can start to roll this out to patients with limited English proficiency. And I'm most excited about that because this platform will provide a way to translate from the patient's primary language to English, as well as allow um, that access for patients from their home into the clinic in a way that is challenging today for many practices. It's it's challenging for patients to, to call the phone and use the phone or even email or send a, a message through the patient portal to reach their providers. So I'm most excited about making this transition for patients with limited English proficiency, especially as um, we recognize that those are patients that have historically faced disparities within our healthcare systems. And if we can use technology to actually narrow those disparities instead of widen them, I think that would be a huge success. I think here at GI ASCO this morning on the first day, um, the sessions so far, a lot of them have been around artificial intelligence and tools that we can use to provide better care for patients. Um, I think it's important to realize those tools only work if you have the systems and processes outlined behind them in order to manage that data and still take care of the patient. So it's not um, as easy as putting a new tool in place or a new checklist in place, it's really important to think through the local institutional culture and the processes and who's going to actually manage that data, especially because this is new data that we're collecting between clinic visits. Um, and that historically has not been done in our uh, very clinic-based uh, healthcare system in the past. I think for nurses in particular, um, the the role of the oncology nurse with the 
caveat that this is me as a medical oncologist speaking, um, has traditionally been around care in the clinic or care in the hospital um, and infusional care for patients um, who are on infusional therapies and providing cancer-directed care. What we're doing here is more shifting the role of the nurse in the team um, from the from a nurse who's involved in the clinic and administration of cancer directed therapy to a nurse who is involved on the care team taking care of the patient responding to symptoms and focusing on symptom management between the clinic visits and i i think in oncology we have um a lot of team based care but those teams need to shift in what their individual roles are when we move from hospital-based care to clinic-based care to this being home-based care. Um, and it's important, I think, throughout those teams to think about how each clinician and provider functions at the top of their license. And in this specific project, making sure that the nurse is an active member of the team, responding to patient symptoms, helping to manage symptoms and providing education to patients on how to manage those symptoms is a, is a vital part of, of the process.